We have looked at the first of the five kingdoms and this kingdom on era that deals with bacteria. Now, we're going to look at a second kingdom which we call kingdom protoctista. Protoctista, spelling is key. Now, kingdom protoctista has individuals that, organisms that do not have clear features. They do have a lot of general characteristics on them. As a matter of fact, it consists of those organisms that could not fit in any of the four kingdoms. Say we have organisms that can make their own food, but sometimes they eat other organisms. They, that can't be a plant, it can't be an animal. We have organisms that make their own food and yet they can move. Plants can't move and animals can't make food. So it's a kingdom that has organisms that couldn't belong in any of the other four as we're going to go talking about them in detail. Imagine a wardrobe or a cupboard at home or those, you know, the sections in the kitchen. There are some parts where there are glasses and you know these are for glasses and the glasses are very clean. Plates, pans, but there's that one cabin where there are things that are not very clear. They look like cups, they can act as plate though. You know, they look like mugs, but they can work as lunch boxes too. You know, those that can't belong anywhere clear. <clears throat> if there were a kingdom of organisms, there would be kingdom protoctista. Now, we have examples of protists or protoctists. Most of these are, are not very common to us because they are unicellular. But we have Euglena, Amoeba, Tripanosoma, Chlamydomonas, you know the, the parasite that causes malaria? It's a protoctist too, which is Plasmodium. Now let's try and find some of the general characteristics of protoctists. Number one, they are mostly unicellular. By unicellular we mean they are single celled, but they are not bacteria. That's number one. Number two, they mostly live in water or watery places like swamps, like swamps, wetlands. I don't know how they differ from each other, but watery places. Number three, they have membrane-bound organelles. You remember the organelles we talked about? Chloroplasts, mitochondria, nucleus. They are, they, 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 they have them, okay? And then next is that some members are able to move. Some members of the kingdom are capable of moving. And um, some use what we're going to call pseudopodia, some use cilia, and some use flagella, as we're going to talk uh, about them. And they have various modes of nutrition, where some carry out photosynthesis, uh, for example, the one we're going to call Ayuglena and Chlamydomonas. Others actually feed on other, other cells, other cells smaller than themselves. Okay? So they engulf those cells and then inside the, the, the enzymes break them down and that's how they feed. Okay? By engulfing we mean this is the cell, it finds a smaller cell, it engulfs it, and now this cell, this this other cell inside is broken down, okay? So that that, that organism gets the benefit, and we call this phagocytosis. Phago from phages, which means eating. Cytosis, which is cell eating, a cell that eats other other particles. Now. They are majorly, we're going to talk about majorly three phyla. Remember, we talked about hierarchy starting with the kingdom, followed by the phylum. 
Okay. Now under Kingdom Protoptista, there are different phyla under which these organisms belong. And these are Protoptista has different phyla and the first phylum that we're going to talk about is phylum protozoa. Protozoa. Zoa for zoos which means the animal-like protoptists, the, the ones that have the characteristics of animals. So that's phylum protozoa. Vela protozoa has three classes, which are class Rhizopoda, Ciliophora, and Mastigophora. Now, these classes are given according to the mode of movement by those organisms. For example, class Rhizopoda, those are the organisms that move by what we're going to call Pseudopodia, pseudo for false, podia for feet, mm -hmm. false feet. But those are the organisms that move by extension of their, which are going to call pseudopods as we go on. An example of those is only called amoeba. So as they move, their extensions of their cytoplasm that, that, that moves so that when this one reaches, when, when the cell reaches this point, this one, say this is my cell, and my cell wants to move to this point, it makes extensions of the cytoplasm so that it looks maybe like this, so that this part also extends. And when this part extends to this point, we have uh, we have this part of the cell closer here and it goes on extending like that it's some sort of a crawling okay so this pseudopodia so enable the movement of the organism as you see in that illustration and now we go to class ciliophora or which we call ciliata and if you can recall, some of the parts of a cell is a part we call cilia. Now, cilia are hair-like projections of the body of the cell. Say, if this is my cell, it has ex hair-like extensions like that. Okay. All over. Now, these ones move in a rhythm and create a current. So they can either lead to movement of the organism or they can create a current of water that can bring food close to this organism. Okay? So the organisms that have cilia or that move by help of cilia belong to a class which we call class ciliophora or which we call class ciliata. And um, an example of such is the paramecium. Thirdly is class Mastigophora. Now, Mastigophora, these organisms have a unique way of moving. It's, it's, it's a way of almost, if you can imagine yourself um, swimming and you see your fora, you'd be swimming like this. Okay? Now, if you imagine yourself swimming and you belong to class Mastigophora, it's a funny way of swimming. You push your legs in front and then push them back and you go on moving like that. It's quite a strange way to move. But these mastigophorans move by the help of the flagellum. If you remember the flagellum, it is the tail-like structure on a cell uh, that enables it to, to move. Just a way the tail of fish enables it to, to move its way through the water. Now, 
These are the classes of phylum protozoa. And characteristically, they are unicellular. Secondly, they are mainly found in freshwater or marine environments, meaning it's not easy to find them on bricks, on walls, on your shoes. You are mostly likely to find them in places that have water. And as we have seen, they move the local mode, move from one place to another by help of either pseudopodia or cilia or flagella. And now we're going to look at details of these organisms starting with amoeba.